everybody, my name is AFH Gaming, but before we get anywhere near the video, please make sure to go and check out the Everlasting Summer fan page can we to keep updated with the game and all the awesome features coming soon. Lots and lots of amazing pictures and posts. And um, yeah, basically the site is where all Everlasting Summer fans unite. If you want have any questions, make sure to ask this young fella right here. He's so cute and sexy, but I'm not gay, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gay. And let's not forget to mention the beautifulest girl in the camp is Slavia, of course. Am I right or wrong? I'm sure I'm right. If I zoom in very closely, you can see both of her boobies collapse as she skips through the moonlight. And let's not forget to mention the maddest girl in the game, Elisa, who could be even part of the Ill Illuminati, and her big boobies! Everybody, my name is Avi Gaming. Welcome back to some more everlasting civil let's play. Now this time we're about to go find Lena on Strawberry Island. So let's continue the story. Surprisingly, the island now seemed the same as it did in the time in the daytime. Here, usually everything is different. After dusk, it felt like another world, a mystery world, scary at times, but beautiful in its own way. A world of shadows and whispers, a nocturnal world. I slowly walked around the island, looking for the boat which Lena took to come here. The grass softly rustled under my feet. The occasional waves peacefully struck the shore and bounced back like flies, too, too, too tired from beating on the, gra on the glass. The breeze from the water lazily stirred the leaves of the, of the trees, out of habit rather than a real desire to make the night grove sing. I looked at, the, at this wonderful picture with such delight that I didn't even notice something until I stumbled onto it. It was a boat. Well, of course. She wouldn't get here by swimming. I headed towards the center of the island. After a hundred meters, I heard a rustling from behind a tree. Don't come any closer. No time again! Lena whispered. I hesitated. Don't come any closer. She, sa she said louder. How did you know it's me? Though she hadn't in indicated that she she'd known that. All right. Wow. I leaned against the tree trying not to look behind it. Elisa told me that you would be here. So what? It was difficult for me to know what emotions Lena was experiencing. Her voice was steady enough, even though I could read ir 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 irritation and annoyance in it. I could not understand whether she was angry or whether it was, it was all the same to her. That came out awkward. I was doing my best to avoid unnecessary apologies and excuses, but couldn't find other words to use instead. Was that the only reason you came? No, well, I don't know. You don't know, but you still came. Yes. You shouldn't have. Why? Of course, if I'm bothering you. Why are you following me? I... She was right. It certainly looked that way. Moreover, I definitely felt attracted to her. You shouldn't think like this. How should I think? I don't know. I can only draw conclusions based on your behavior. I really don't know. I guess I'd better go. I was confused, but it was hard just to be near her. Why? Since you came, I seemed to hear a playful tone in her voice. All right. And? What? What did Elisa tell you? Nothing special. I see. Yeah. Well then. Yep. We just stayed silent for a while. Since you came, tell me something. Tell me about something. Well, I don't know. For example, about what happened this morning. What about? What about what happened this morning? You know, you yourself didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to, but now I want to. Lena's voice trembled. I couldn't understand what was happening at all anymore. Maybe it's not her behind the tree. Don't look. Okay, okay, but what's wrong? Nothing, just don't look. All right, as you wish. Why not look? I don't get it. So, nothing happened? Well, something did, but... What was all just a silly accident? Then why were why are you so worried about what I think about? I'm not worried. And anyway, you yourself. 
I said louder, beginning to feel irritated. What about me? Why are you so concerned about this situation? Who said that I'm concerned about this situation? Then what? Nothing. She said in a whisper and I fell silent. And fell silent. Such talk would lead us to nowhere. Lena won't say anything, and I seem to be too stupid to guess, or even just to be sure about my myself. Sorry, I guess it's all my fault. I just can't, cannot understand. Why? What? Why do you keep apologizing for everything? For what you did, for what you are doing, even for what you haven't done yet. But... Maybe she was right, but I couldn't behave differently. I felt the need to apologize to her, to everyone. So they would not think badly of me, won't, wouldn't laugh at me, so I can put away something unsaid and eliminate misunderstandings. Anyway, that's your business. Lena got angry. Apologize, make excuses, why should I care? Okay, well, I'm not guilty. In fact, I don't think I could be blamed for anything. But then what's wrong? What is wrong with you? Why would something be wrong with me? I don't know, I just thought so. I just think so. Oh, you just think so! She laughed. You speak as if you know me. I did not answer. Please leave. No! Lena said after a while. I didn't move, just could not. Had no strength to do so. I wanted nothing at that point. Didn't want to excuse myself to apologize. I didn't even want to hear her understanding. I was too tired for everything. Why? Just leave. She whispered. I don't want to. Then I'll leave. Let's just go together. No. How long are you going to be offended? By what? What's wrong with you? Everyone here behaves normally except you. I, didn't, I did not care what, what my words meant, as if they had been said by someone else and the topic of the conversation meant nothing. You really don't understand anything. Elisa was right. About what? Never mind. Oh, I failed. I failed. I freaking failed. I closed my eyes to think it over. No, I can't go. I don't understand. Don't know what to think, what to do. And since when, when did I stop worrying about my situation in this world or how to get back? Since when was the only thing I could think about Lena or how others would, l would look at me or how my actions looked from the other side? It's just stupid and it's not like me. In fact, it's inappropriate in this situation. In short, I didn't do anything and don't intend to justify things that I d which I didn't do. There was no reply. Hey, do you hear me? I finally decided to see who was actually hiding behind the tree, but no one was there. So she left. Oh no. I rushed over to Lena's boat, but she was already far away, almost near the pier. Whatever! I shouted and walked along the shore. Why whatever? God, you need to care about this girl! I got back relatively quickly and without much trouble. However, my hands still ached terribly and my eyes were closing themselves. Probably such a physical and more importantly emotional load is too much for one person. I walked slowly towards the camp leader's cabin, staring down at my feet and thinking about nothing. Someone called me at the square. Hey! Oh my god, this goddamn girl. Elisa ran up to me. Have you been to the island? Yes. To tell the truth, I didn't want to talk about anything, but I already didn't have the strength to lie to her. And how did it go? Doesn't matter. I'm very tired, I'm gonna go to sleep. Come on, tell me! Her face had such a nasty grim grimace, grim grimace that I shuddered with rage. Why should you care? Well, I just... She murmured in dismay. Mind your own business! I snapped in quick and quickened my pace towards the cabin. At least I did not try to stop me. Annoyingly, Olga Dmitrievna had not returned yet, and I could not find my key. What if I lost it? The only thing I could do was wait. I plopped down into the deck chair and closed my eyes. My heart was heavy, and my soul was being torn apart with vague expectations. From time to time, I had a feeling that I was already dead just without realizing it, and had been thrown into hell. But really, instead of trying to get out of here, I'm spinning on a diabolic roundabout, and it goes faster and faster. I'm becoming more and more involved in the life of this world, of this camp. As if I had no past life, the real one. As if I was always interested in the opinions of others. Damn it, I never cared about it. Why right here? Why right now? I recalled the face of Lena in tears. Yeah, probably not the opinion. Not the opinions of others, but her opinion was the one I cared about. 
I heard Far's footsteps after, and after a while Olga Dmitrievna appeared. She looked at me for a few seconds, seemed like she was about to say something, but then just sighed, opened the door with their key and went in. I followed her. Shapeless shadows, blurred memories, fragments of feelings and emotions swirled in my head for a long time. For so long that after a while I couldn't tell where I was on what's happening to me. The only salvation was sleep. Ugh, things aren't looking too good, guys. Things are not looking too good at all. Day 6. Okay, I got Lena's root, but the problem is, am I gonna get her good ending or bad ending? So I got Lena's root, but good or bad, I don't know. I woke up because somebody was shaking my shoulders. It was too hard for me to open my eyes, so I just went, went, uh, pathetically. Get up already, you're going to miss the lineup! Once I realized what Olga Dmitrina wanted from me, and what times it was, I rolled over to face the wall. I was so tired that I wanted to choke the camp later just so she would quit disturbing my recovery from the hellish yesterday. Semyon, get up immediately! I mustered up my strength, opened my eyes, and sat up. Olga Dmitrievna, I understand, but I had a hard day yesterday. Can I sleep at least today? I started pleading. It's out of the question. Line up in mandatory for every pioneer. And you've already missed it a few times. My head went completely numb, so I just couldn't find any argument against that. In a couple of minutes, we were already standing at the square. I dozed off, taking great pains not to fall asleep on my feet, so I missed everything that Olga Dmitrievna announced. Oh, same thing as always. The majority of the pioneers seemed to feel the same. Electronic yawned constantly. Elisa had a huge baggy eyes. Only Oliana seemed to be full of health and energy as always. Of course, energetic girl. I swept my eyes over the lineup yet again and couldn't find Lena. That's odd. Generally, she's a delegate. She's a delegant and committed girl. It's unlike her to miss such events. On the other hand, what was too much for her yesterday? Such stress. She's probably depressed. Although such behavior from her was very surprising. I mean, I suspect that she was not the kind of person she wanted others to, to see her as. But I never, ha but I never expected such a, a drastic change. Lena amazingly somehow reminded me of Elisa, even more harsh and brutal at times. And now I was not sure how to behave around her. I was simply af afraid of her. Finally, lineup was over and the pioneers dragged themselves off to breakfast. Miku caught up with me near the canteen. Semyon, good morning. How did you sleep? Any dreams? How are you? Ready for breakfast? She has always blabbered without a break, adding a cute smile at the same time. I'm okay. I answered lazily. Today's quite gloomy, maybe because of the weather. It's quite dark. It may even rain. So yeah, everyone is sad and gloomy. Th thought uh, maybe something happened, but no one told me what. Can you imagine that? Something happened and everyone knows about it. A part of me. I was sad about it, but then... Don't worry, you won't miss the end of the world. <laughs> I delivered a snarkly remark. Huh? It looked like she was so into her monologue that she was completely ob obvious to everything around her. And if you are going to miss it somehow, I will make sure to let you know. Nothing. Enjoy your meal! I marched to the canteen with a firm step to get my daily pr pr portion of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. To my surprise, a seat in the far corner was free. I sat down and tried really hard to make a face that would let everyone know that there is really no need to come anywhere near me, unless there was an emergency. I just wanted to sit alone and think. Moreover, keeping my mind off other things was making me less sleepy. Hi, mind if I join? Ah, oh, Slavia. I didn't know no Slavia standing there. Strange. Sure. I answered after hesitating for a second. Bad mood? A bit. Did something happen? Not really. You don't have to tell me if you don't if you don't want to. There's nothing to tell you about. We kept eating in silence until I asked, Where did you go last night? Me? Oh I just wanted to be alone for a while. That's not like you. I felt a bit more lively. Really? Well maybe. It's, it's also not too, not often that you're so gloomy. She might be right. Even in the most unvariable circumstances, I've always tried to have a positive outlook on things. Um, not that I was uh, optimistic, I just always try not to feel too down. Keeping my previous life in mind, it's only natural. As soon as you let depression get a hold of you, the news will start to, to look very appealing. Perhaps. When Slavia was done with her meal, I was still poking the parts of my soup. I'll be going. By the way, have you seen Lena? Nope. Why do you ask? I didn't see her in the morning lineup. That's odd. That's not like her. 
Maybe you are right. I don't think it's a big deal, to be honest. Yes, of course, I was just wondering. I sat for a few more minutes in place and then headed outside without finishing my breakfast. Today was quite gloomy, the first gloomy day during my time here. I'd kind of gotten used to the bright and sun. The heat that would only subside by the evening seemed to be an um, irreplaceable component of this place. It looks like even here the weather changes after all, almost like it's matching my mood. It looks like just pr prove that this place um, this place or its creators are, uh, are um, sentient and have great storytelling skills. Sometimes I really wanted to focus on a single theory of mine, concentrate on it and forget about all others. Just to decide for myself that it's all done by aliens or am I in parallel universe or witchcraft or military experiments. Just to pick up, just to pick one and be done with it. To stop thinking about all the possible explanations in this situation, constantly jumping from one to another just to focus on a single one, but it's impossible. I have almost no facts about anything, nothing extraordinary and happened to me here yet. Yes, some odd things took place, but they can and do happen in the real world too. After yet another cycle of similar thoughts, I found myself at the bus stop of Route 410 and the gates of the Camp Sovionic. No answers, no hint, no clues. I was walking wherever my legs were taking me. It was quiet in the residential area. Not a single person there, to be precise. My astonishment grew even more when an electronic appeared around the next turn. I wanted to call out to him by, but stopped, because he was going a little too confidently in an unknown direction. It's strange that goes again in his nature. Anyway, what can I talk with electronic about? And yeah, I have to start a conversation first. Seems like I was completely in despair. However, it would be interesting to follow him and to find out where he's rushing to. As a child, I like play I like games of spies, and here's a chance to put myself into a real spy shoes. I decided not to sneak and hide in a special way, and just tailed him quietly for distance. Soon we came to the library. Electronic knocked and went inside. I stood behind a huge tree so nobody could see me and went and began to wait. He was absent for quite a long time. Perhaps it's a stupid idea, because in fact, what difference does it make if I went into the library? Maybe just desired to get something to read. He was walking fast, so what? Perhaps he has some business afterwards. My thoughts were disrupted by a loud door slam. I looked towards the library and saw Electronic running away from there, and Zenya who ran after him shouting along the way. I don't want to hear it anymore, or to see you either! They ran past me and naturally they were so involved in chasing that they didn't notice me. The whole situation seemed very funny and I decided that I needed to find out what was the matter what the matter was. I wonder where could electronic be running to like that. Oh, another choice. Where am I gonna go? Um Um Kitchen Dining Hall? Let's try it up. Hiding the canteen wouldn't be a bad decision, however, he wasn't here either. Damn it. Um He could go back to the clubhouse! Yes, it's quite obvious that he ran straight to his native cybernet club. I entered without knocking, but I didn't find anyone inside. Electronic, it's me! The sound of footsteps came from the next room and, and soon Electronic himself appeared. Hi, Samuel, I am just... His eyes ran guilty and his shirt had visible traces of sweat. Going in for sports, I see. Sprinting. I... You saw that? He asked doomed. Yes, purely by chance, so I decided to buy a stop and ask you how you were doing and what happened. Nothing special, really. Indeed, fleeing from an angry librarian it's nothing. You can tell me. I smiled disarmingly. Really? And you won't tell? And won't you tell? Of course. Silent as the dead. Cross my heart. It seems I exaggerated there a bit, but looks like it had convinced him. Okay. He took a deep breath, gathering his strength. You know, I've liked Zenyan since the first day. Are you serious? And those words, I wanted to fall to the floor and start rolling around, shaken by violent attacks of laughter. That is exactly what I would do right now. But out of respect for him, I refrained. Still, his next few words flew past my ears. And so I just decided, well, you saw what happened next. A brave fellow indeed. Well, you try harder, I guess, and you will succeed. I patted him on the shoulder, trying really hard not to laugh. Thank you for the support. He smiled sadly. Okay, I have to go. I have some work to do. I shot, um, I shot out of the clubhouse like a bullet and finally laughed out loud.
However, if you think about it, Electronic and Xenia would make a wonderful couple. They are actually a perfect match. It is strange that Xenia rejected him. I was going towards the square, thinking further about this episode. At the end of the day, Electronic is not much of a, simpl a simpleton. Just like that, he declared his love, even realizing that refusal uh, will follow. Or on the contrary, is it because he's just as simple as an apple pie? Either way, you can feel the honesty and sincerity in his behavior. More complicated people would spend hours, days, months, years thinking about how to how to present this in a better way. What consequences it could have, um, and whether you should even bother. I would do so myself, and rather I have done so. But he w he just said it, unsuccessfully, of course. Uh, but uh, but it was it could have also gone differently. These thoughts made me completely melancholy, so much so that uh, the lunch signal, usually so anticipated, didn't trigger any emotions at all. Lunchtime, the canteen was chock full. It seems like the camp was slowly emerging from the morning depression. Maybe the sun had come out of the clouds contributed to that, or maybe something else that I missed while running after electronic. Only the cup, only the place next to Eliana and Lisa turned out to be free. I raced myself and started walking towards them. Eating was still in the city. Can I sit with you? Oh, just sit down. Why are you so gloomy? It's just that you two are cheerful. <laughs> I'm trying to maintain the energy balance in the universe. Eliana giggled. Odd, oddly enough, the, uh, the girls did not pay any attention to me and talked about their own concerns. At first I thought it was good, but then I started to think that they were just talking no notice of me. By the way, where is Lena? Because of all my thinking, I completely forgot about her. I don't know, Elisa answered absently. Has she still not appeared? As you can see, I took a, I took a look around the canteen but didn't see her anywhere. And nobody's heard anything about her? No. Don't you find it strange? What's so strange? Maybe she's reading, maybe sleeping or something. Seems more like you're talking about yourself. It's none of your business, is it? Elisa uh, interjected angrily. Well, if a person is missing, you weren't so worried when Shurik disappeared. That's quite different. Yes, and why, I wonder? I had no answer, and just blankly looked at Elisa before going back to my food. She did not insist on count and continuing the conversation. Lunch was over. I suddenly stood up and went out of the canteen without a goodbye. So Linda disappeared. What should I do now? Well, I wonder what happened to her, actually. Did she, like, run away or something? I don't know if I got the bad ending. On the other hand, why should I do anything? Why me? Where am I? And why am I here? Who are all these people? One cannot be absolutely sure whether Lena is, is what she seems. Perhaps all this doesn't even exist, so why should I worry? However, for me, now Lena is still the same Lena, the modest, quiet girl I met on the first day, and even her strange behavior could not affect my attitude towards her. In the end, it's not certain that I still exist, so while the world is logical, at least to some extent, I have to play by its rules. I quickly went to the camp leader's cabin. Once inside, I saw Golden Retrieve now lying in the bed and reading a book. Do you know where Lena is? No, why are you asking? She's nowhere to be found. She's missing. She missed both breakfast and lunch. So what? She looked at me blankly. What do you mean, so what? Oh, now you don't care! When Shurik was gone, the whole camp was searching for him in the early morning. I don't understand you. There's something strange happening in the camp leader again. She was behaving absolutely incompre incomprehensibly and illogically. Do you think it's normal? So where is she now? I don't know. Olga and Trina replied calmly. This is too much. I started to lose my temper. Ask Miku. She is her roommate after all. That was a good idea, because obviously I would get so more answers here. Miku doesn't really appear much in the story. I went outside, slammed the door, and went to Miku's and Lena's cabin. <clears throat> it was nice that the orchestra girl had told me... Uh, um, before where she lives, which is why I was at the door of her cabin a minute later. I should have knocked, but some reason I couldn't. After a few deep breaths, I knocked on the door several times. Come in! I heard a familiar voice. Hi, do you know where Lena is? No, I haven't seen her today. You're looking for her, right? Don't you think it's strange? By the way, time I'd started suspecting everybody of hiding information about Lena's location of conspiracy, of involvement in in me being here, of Kennedy's assassination, of a hundred of uh, other terrible things. Well, you know, maybe I, I thought she went somewhere and then I had just 
got lost in doing things. Breakfast, music club, helping to clean, and then lunch, and then, and then... Okay, I see. What about yesterday? Was everything normal? Well, she came late immediately and went to bed. I didn't even notice anything wrong. No chance of finding out anything here either. Thanks. I said awkwardly and left. At that moment, it seemed to me that sh the missing Lena was the only living person in, that, in this pack of talking dummies, and I had to find her. However, it seemed almost impossible to do this alone, so I went for help. Who would be most willing to help me? Of course, Slavia! I decided that at the, f at the time, she would be engaged in cleaning something. For example, the square. So I went there. My sixth sense didn't let me down. Hi! Hey! Have you seen Lena? No, why are you asking? Nobody's seen her since this morning. She was absent during breakfast as well as during lunch. Strange. I also think that this is to put into mildly strange. Can you help me find her? Oh, sorry. Maybe later. I've got cleaning here to finish. It was like a lightning strike. It took a few awkward steps back and ran from this place. No, that was not her. It was... It was as if somebody had replaced her. Not only her, but also the other inhabitants of this camp. What is happening? The strangest thing is that it doesn't have anything to do with me, but with Lena. Maybe she came here the same way as I did. Exactly! That could be the reason why she, she behaves quite quietly most of the time. No, wait. But what about her, knowing Elisa? No, something does not add up. Okay, guys, but I think we're going to have to end this episode right here, but I'm sure we're going to continue in the next episode. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you didn't enjoy this episode, and subscribe to join the Apex Army, and I'll see you all in my next video. Adios.